So if you just, just want to talk that through, the thinking process in terms of where you want to set the microscope up in terms of the patient position, Dan. So first thing, whenever setting up the microscope, begin by getting the table to a comfortable height. I personally prefer to have the table fairly low because you're aiming for a position where you can then adjust your chair so that your arms are elbows in at the side, elbows bent to 90 degrees, and then your operating field is flat at that position. And you can put some um, either gauze or some gown packs or a kidney dish in here to create a stable base upon which you can rest the side of your hands to give you the best um, chance of minimizing tremor. And then in positioning the scope, we tend to bring it in at the top corner on one side of the bed so that you've got a break in the elbow of the scope itself which allows you a bit more mobility of the um, eyepiece and then you want to just check that your eyepiece comes into the right position uh, to, depending on where you're operating so that you can then uh, get the setup correct and proceed from there. Okay. So, um, interpupillary distance setting, um, which you can see here. So, the interpupillary distance setting on this particular brand of scopes is done at the very top uh, and obviously varies from person to person. So, when you're first starting out in microsurgery, you just need to have a play around with this and just see what works for you. So, for me, I'm 64, so you just adjust the dial to, to fit your interpupillary distance. Okay. And then the second thing on a lot of scopes is they then have a, a gauge that allows you to adjust the focus. Yeah. So for people who um, require glasses, they can then actually take the glass off and adjust this uh, to continue microsurgery and, and be able to operate with somebody who doesn't require glasses and still be in the same focus. Um, most people, however, tend to leave this centralised at zero and, and okay. operate with glasses on. Um, um, Prakash, do you want to come into a position as assistant and we can see that there are two ways that you, your position can be one, in one of two ways, either standing, uh, which Prakash is demonstrating here, it tends to be easier as an assistant uh, to be standing rather than uh, sitting down because you're over the top of the patient. Uh, so again, get your eye in a nice comfortable position and shoulders nice and comfortable uh, and then you're set for that. So that's a microscope set up. Uh, just in terms of um, your depth of field and focus, um, um, do you want to just make a comment about that, Dan? So yeah, once you've, once you've decided where you're operating, you then want to make sure you're focusing on the target that you're going to be operating on. So again, you come to the handset, and this varies from scope to scope, but you have a focus dial and a zoom dial. And the best way to get focused is to zoom all the way in to the target that you're, you're planning to operate on. Then get your focus right for that particular target. And then as you zoom out, it will remain in focus. And actually, the, the, the depth at which you'll remain in focus increases as your zoom reduces. So you then have a bit more flexibility as, for example, when you're manipulating a vessel, inevitably you're going to come in and out of your, your field of focus. So the more zoomed in you are, yeah. the less leeway you have on being able to remain in focus. Yeah. And as your zoom comes up, you have a lot more leeway. So you have to make that balance between having the the resolution you need and the, the sort of um, magnification you require, but also the versatility that comes from being slightly more zoomed out. Yeah, sure. I mean, I guess the only other additional thing that I would say is that um, the, the more zoomed in you are, the quicker it is to be out of that depth for focus. For focus, uh, yeah. So you tend to kind of balance the, the, high, the benefit of a higher magnification versus the disadvantage of a very low field. Uh, depth uh, in, that stays in focus as well. Um, in terms of patient setup, then let's just get the uh, chair, the uh, Prakash, if you want to just um, adopt the position of the patient. So, uh, shoulder roll, yep. for neck extension, a good head ring. Yep. And quite often we'll extend the neck to give us exposure. Okay, and then the only other really useful thing is to roll away from the surgeon. So that what you're doing, if I put that table on, it is, it's just on the other side. Right. And the, the benefit that offers, if we just look at the top of Prakash's neck, so we're going to turn your head to the right and extend a little bit, but it just reveals this neck here for you. And all Dan's done is just rotate that table away from the surgical, uh, away from the surgeon. 
Um, I tend to use uh, the chest as my arm rest, so I'll operate uh, with my left hand on the left side of the neck, and then I'll use my right hand on the right side. That's how I get around the problem with uh, hand rest, but you can get, uh, you can get um, uh, theatre seats that have built-in armrests as well to facilitate uh, uh, stability. Um, final thing to comment about is the, the micro-suction, the micro-bipolar. So we would set the bipolar down uh, to seven or eight uh, with some fi very fine tip bipolar forceps. And then the suction uh, needs to be right the way down as well. Um, get that suction down uh, to low, uh, low rate uh, so that it uh, uh, isn't detrimental on the, on the small vessels. I think that's pretty much it. Anything to add? Just going to say, maybe... Um what you could do is do a demonstration using the monitor to the zoom in and yep. zooming out. So I'll get the simulation vessels for that and then yeah. we'll do what I'll do I could do is I can overlay you know the mic the simulation stuff we did mm. with the vessels I can yeah, overlay that over this video yeah. as well. Okay, thanks chaps.